you can see in the background, there are Minnesota Vikings supporters. They are rounding the stadium. They are rounding the stadium. We are now at the TCF Stadium here in Minneapolis, Minnesota, where the crowd is rounding the stadium here in Minneapolis. We saw Governor, former Governor Jesse Ventura out with the crowd. He made a couple of comments, and you will hear those comments shortly. hoovering in the air. Spectators are looking at the protesters. Change the name! Change the name! Change the name! The little kids don't know what's happening. They're just here. Spectators are looking on. looking on. Behind me are the people that are protesting the Washington Redskins here today to take their name down. We've rounded the stadium here in Minneapolis, Minnesota. It's been a very brisk day here. The protesters are serious. Just a quick history lesson. In 1862, Abraham Lincoln ordered the military to hang about 40 Native Americans and a few blacks down in Mankato. Since then, I don't think Minnesota has taken too well to the Native Americans. Ramsey and all these other names you know have been guilty of mistreating Native Americans. But well, we need you to dig deeper. We need everybody to dig deeper and educate everybody. If not, let this continue and let it be let it be in denial like Dan Snyder is. But I thank the people of Shakopee for finishing this stadium. And the irony is the Vikings are playing here today because that stadium is now being built. So what goes around comes around. I brought this message to a good friend of mine who I've known for a while, got to get closer with this year, who's here in attendance, who has taken a national stand on this, and I want to mention his name because 
I'm only going to mention one name. You'll forget all the rest of them we need to mention. With all the important people that are standing up here, buddy. Ray Halbrenner. Indian country today. And he's here to support us. That's all I have to say. You didn't come here to listen to me. I'd like to introduce our Secretary Treasurer, Lori Watson. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. I want to take a moment to acknowledge all of our elders who are here. Thank you very much for being here and all of our young people. You wouldn't believe what this crowd looked like from here. You are all so beautiful. Thank you for being here. Since last year's rally outside the Metrodome, the demand for change and the energy on that night has continued to grow in the past year, thanks to your hard work and your efforts to make your voices heard. I have a message today to read from a very special man who joins us today in spirit, an Olympic gold medalist from Pine Ridge, South Dakota, who has inspired generations of natives and many others. This is a statement from Billy Mills, Olympic gold medalist, Ogala Sioux, outspoken opponent of native mascots. And I quote, using a, racial, using a racial slur with a graphic violent history isn't just disrespectful, it's morally inexcusable. The mascot robs young, young American Indians of their self-esteem and invades their dreams. I strongly support our sisters and brothers protesting in Minnesota this weekend, and I stand with them. Although I could not be there in person, I am proud that on November 1st, Running Strong for American Indian Youth launched Dream Starter, a new grant program to jumpstart the dreams of young Native people. We're giving away 50 $10,000 grants over the next five years to disrupt the cycle of poverty to disrupt the cycle of poverty of dreams that the mascot has helped to create. Thank you so much. Let's go forward and change the name. For the kids here, I think this is going to be uh, the, if I, something happens to me, she will be the MC right here. But, but if everybody else can move off the stage who's not a speaker next, that would be helpful. Next, a special friend of Native American peoples and all who fight prejudice is here to say a few words. Let's give a warm welcome to Congressman Keith Ellison.
speaker is here on behalf of the Boys Fort Band of Chippewa in northern Minnesota. Please welcome the District 1 representative on the Boise Boys Fort Tribal Council, Brandon Benner. Good morning. It's good to see you all here. Um, I'd like to take a moment and ask that all tribal members please take the time to acknowledge and pay respect to our non-Native American brothers and sisters that are here with us. There, nothing brings us more honor than to have you standing beside us. I represent the Boys Fort Band of Chippewa in northern Minnesota where we are taught to respect and honor all people. All people. There, two of the things we live by is respect and honor. And there is respect and honor in being a Red Lake Ogichida, a Fond du Lac Ogichida, a Deer River warrior, an Or Brave. But there is no respect or honor in being called a redskin. I thank you all for being here with us today and Mino Gijigut. I hope you have a good day. Our next speaker scarcely needs an introduction. Congresswoman Betty McCollum represents Minnesota's 4th District and holds leadership positions in the U.S. House. Among those roles, she is the co-chair of the Bipartisan Congressional Native American Caucus. Betty has been the most outspoken advocate in Congress against the use of derogatory names as sports mascots. Please give a warm, warm welcome to our shining champion in Congress, U.S. Representative Betty McCollum. Good morning. Today we are gathered in a spirit of peace and solidarity. And this is the spirit I'm so proud to be able to join you with. My native brothers and sisters from tribal nations all across Minnesota and the United States. Great turnout, everyone. I especially want to welcome Ray Hallbrenner of the United Nation and express my great admiration for Ray's unyielding leadership for Change the Mascot. Thank you, Ray. I also want to acknowledge two people who are with us in spirit, our U.S. Senators. Al Franken and Amy Klobuchar, who are with you today in spirit. They also say, change the mascot. Today, we are bringing our voices together in respect and dignity for all people. We are here to tell the NFL there is no honor in a racial slur. It is time to change the mascot. Here in Minnesota, we have 11 proud tribal nations. But only 150 years ago, their ancestors, men, women, and children, were hunted and murdered for profit. This was government-funded policy of genocide. This is a painful and brutal, shameful history that is still with us. But instead of joining us to seek reconciliation and healing, Dan Snyder, Roger Goodell, and the NFL team owners are exploding for profit a racial slur. The same racial slur that was used by those who murdered Dakota and Jibble brothers and sisters and Native people all across this country. If there is any decency in the NFL, the time is now to change the mascot. to say this is about being politically correct. I say promoting respect and human dignity 
is morally correct, and it is at the core of what we share as Americans and our values. To those who say the NFL's use of this racist mascot is free speech, I say hate speech should never be free. It must be confronted, it must be challenged, and it must be condemned. a strong, unwavering me message. Our campaign for respect will defeat the NFL's racism. Our campaign for dignity will defeat the NFL's vile racial slur. And a movement for decency will triumph with the power of the people. We will change the mascot. We have brought this movement to a new level. The journey continues. There is more work to do. We need your strength. We need your commitment for justice, equality, and respect for all people. Together, we will use our power to reject racism, to give hope to the next generation, and once and for all, to change the mascot. Miigwech. A notable woman leader in our state and in Indian country will address us next. Please say hello to our next speaker, Chief Executive Mally Benjamin, who brings greetings from the Mille Lacs Band of Ojibwe and the Minnesota Chippewa Tribe. A sovereign nation in East, East Central Minnesota. I am honored to represent over 4,500 of our tribal members here today. I was also asked to speak for the Minnesota Chippewa Tribe. We are six tribal nations with more than 40,000 members. We are proud to be Anishinaabe. We are proud to be sovereign Indian nations. We are proud to be Minnesota Vikings fans, but we are not mascots. A few years ago, the Shakopee Dakota people gave the gift to the University of Minnesota. It was the largest financial gift the U of M has ever received from the most generous Indian tribe in the nation. It was used to build a stadium. Later today, inside those walls, the most degrading word for Native people in the English language will be used over and over and over again. But I can promise you this, here in Minnesota, in the heart of Indian country, in the land of the 11 sovereign Indian nations and the 100,000 Native Americans, this, world, this word will not be celebrated inside and not be tolerated outside. And one day soon, it will be banned from the NFL. Dan Snyder says he is honoring us. He says he will never change the name and he said to a reporter, you can put that in all caps. Well, I have a message for Dan Snyder. You are on the wrong side of history, the wrong side of jo social justice, and the wrong side of human rights. We will not stop. We will not stop until that name is changed and we will never get up. Give up, and Dan Snyder, you can put that all in caps. We have elders who have lived their lives preserving our language and our culture. They are not mascots. We have children who want every, who want what every American kid wants, to grow up and be proud of who, who they are and proud of their heritage. They are not mascots. And we have more men and women act, women actively serving in the military than any other group in America. They are not mascots. Dan Snyder says he is honoring us. Well, let me tell you how we honor our brave warriors. We hold ceremonies for them while they are away. We offer a SAMA and we pray for them. Veterans say that when going into battle, they could actually hear our drums beating for them. When they come home, we hold a ceremony for them. They are given an eagle feather for their bravery. That is how Indian people honor one another. 
But there are too many who never come home from two world wars, Korea, Vietnam, and the Middle East. They fought and died for this country and for your freedom too, Dan Snyder. And they are not mascots. I am a proud Anishinaabe woman. I am a grandmother. I am a tribal leader. I am not a mascot. I say big wink to everyone who is here today, native and non-native. The tide is turning. Standing together, we will win this human rights victory. Let's make it clear to Dan Snyder, all of us, say it with me in capital letters. We are not mascots. Again, we are not mascots. We are not mascots. We are not mascots. We are not mascots. Another strong leader of her people has joined us here this morning. Please welcome Irma Visner, Chairwoman of the White Earth Nation. Mino Gishigad, it's a good day. It's a good day. I am excited to be here today. Standing here with all of you, our Native brothers and sisters, our women, our children, and not inside there. We, we have never been stronger where our resolve has never been greater, our fight has never been more enduring than today when we stand together and change the name. Change the name. We stand together with our mothers, our grandmothers, our aunties, our sisters, our nieces, and our children. Because our women are the backbone of our nations, and our children and youth are the future, and we stand with them. We stand again today, and as I said, stronger, because this fight has been going on for too long. Just a few miles down the road here at the state capitol in the 1800s, the scalp of Little Crow was on display for decades. And that is because the state gave a bounty for Dakota scalps, a mascot, a mascot. That painful legacy has continued, but we are going to stop it today. We have, we, we have so many of us, there are, we have the spirit of our ancestors, and we have the spirit of our future, our children, to think about. We will not give up. We will not give up. Miigwech for being here. Miigwech. We are honored to have many friends from Wisconsin to, with us today. Who came on up and stand here. Thank you. And joining us on stage now is the president of the Ho Chunk Nation, John Green Deer. Let's give John a warm Minnesota welcome. Woo! Let's hear it, Indian country! Yeah! This is about the most beautiful sight I've ever seen. You guys look pretty dang good when you're mad. <laughs> Today we're here because a long time ago, our ancestors fell and hit the ground right beneath your feet. They fought for a lot of reasons, to prevent the extermination of our kind, to, to stop the removals, and to stop the assimilation that has been placed on us. No longer will we stand for that, not at all. And no longer will we be forced to tell and, and pre prevent the misteachings to our children and prepare them to defend themselves every year, every November, for school. One man's ignorance brings us together. One man's ignorance brings 
many nations to come together to form one nation, to change one of the most derogatory and racist names in America. We're here to tell this guy I don't know much about. He must not hear very well, so we will speak loudly. And he must forget a lot, so we will remind him. And we will tell him that his racist mascot has to go. It has no place in Indian country. And Dan Snyder, all of America is Indian country. Let's change the mascot. One of the driving forces of today's rally has been a legendary fighter for the civil rights of Native American people. Hey. And he was one of the founders of the National Coalition Against Racism in Sports and Media to end the use of slurs in popular culture. Please welcome Clyde Belcourt. Gone away with down in Disney College or Sea Shot Lordane on the Final Bay or Gitchida. My brothers and sisters, relatives, my heart soars like an eagle today. My heart soars like an eagle today. For 45 solid years, we've been battle, fighting this battle with racism, slurs, mascots that our children have to look at, have to watch every day of the week. And we made a commitment that we would never cease in this effort till all these mascots have to go. Little Black Sambo is gone. John Wayne is dead. It's time for America to let it go. And we, it's a movement, makes a solemn commitment to each and every one of you here today, join us in that battle as we demand, we're going to demand, the same as the National Basketball Association forced Mr. Sterling of the Clippers for one little racist remark that he made to give up that team to sell it. We're going to demand that Daniel Snyder, who should know a little bit about genocide, he should find out about the genocide of the Indian people, where hundreds of tribes were totally erased from the face of the earth. Maybe he should study that. And I want to condemn him. I want to condemn him today for going out in South Dakota, picking one of some of the poorest tribes in his nation, and rent buses to them, so they could come down here and sit in the bleachers with him. And he can point them out and say that he's helping us. We're going to ask for his removal, ask that the mascot change, and ask that he get, let the team go. We're going to be demanding that, and we're not going to give up until it happens. I want to thank every one of you. I want to thank you, for for being here today. Because the same blood that flows in my arms is the same blood that flows in your arms. We're all a get you done. That's warrior blood. Let's stand up for it and tell us racism is a race from the face of the earth as it affects Indian people. Thank you once again for being with us today. Thank you. He's a member of the Spokane Nation and was also a co-founder of the National Coalition Against Racism in Sports Media. It gives me great pleasure to introduce you the very eloquent Charlene Teeters. I think today there's a lot of our ancestors that are also here with us because we know they do their work through us. So do you feel them? They're here with us. We know that Vernon Belcourt is with us. Vernon, you know, came and lifted me to leadership. And so I'll always be thankful for those mentors. And I think it's important for those of us who of leadership, that we lift up other leadership. So I have a great deal here 
Great Deal is one of those up-and-coming um, activists that are doing their work in their very creative way through social media, through the arts. But um, so that's that's why he's here with me. I just want him to stand here with. Give him a. a you probably saw him. You probably saw him on the Daily Show. Did you see him? Those guys were really great. But what my uh, one of my. Um, mentors was Vernon Belcourt, Michael Haney came and stood with me, but probably one of the most important was Kwame Ture. And you may know him as Stokely Carmichael. And he came to our campus and he asked to speak with the student leaders because he understood as a leader it's his responsibility to groom new leaders. And so he gave me 10 minutes of his time to, to speak before the students at the University of Illinois as I was challenging that mascot there. And then he came behind me and he said, if this is an issue for Native American people, then this is an issue for you. <laughs> Even if there are no Native people on this campus, there is no reason to stand back and let their culture be degraded. If you consider yourself an anti-racist, then this is your issue too. So no one should be standing back and getting confused because racism has the power to cause confusion, even within our own community. Dan Snyder is making use of some of our damaged people by busing them here. So we don't get confused by that. Just understand that's the power of racism, and so we stand together and we try to welcome them back. So I'm going to give Greg Deal a couple of minutes here. Uh, thank you, Charlie. I'm, I'm humbled. Pesha, uh, I'm moved to each of you. I'm from Pyramid Lake, uh, Paiute. I live in Washington, D.C. I've lived there for 15 years, and I have kids. And I stand in a place of knowing the type of damage firsthand this is happening. What, what happens when the fans interact with me and with my children? And what happens when people talk to you and ask you the questions that are not based on honor and understanding of our people and our ways and our culture, but instead is based on superficial ideas of what indigenous people are that are informed by mascots, that are informed by stereotypes. I'm standing here in great honor with you people. Uh, this is amazing. This is absolutely amazing. And my heart is moved by each and every one of you standing here because we are a strong people. We are a massive people. We're strong in stature. We are strong in spirit. And we're here. This is not an honor. It doesn't honor me. It honors colonialism. It honors their idea of what they think we should be. It honors romanticism. The honor should come from us. And we stand here to honor our people, our ancestors, our image. And they cannot take that away from us. Change the name. I am proud to live in this city of Minneapolis where public officials are not afraid to speak out against the commercial use of racial slurs. The Minneapolis City Council has called on the Washington team to change its name. And our new mayor has been a consistent champion on this issue. Please welcome the mayor of Minneapolis, the Honorable Betsy Hodges. Well, hello and welcome to Minneapolis. I look out here and I have a message for the Washington team. The clock is ticking on your name. You might as well change it now and get yourselves into the 21st century as probably lonely back in the 19th century. There is no excuse. There is no excuse for not knowing what your team name means and what it does to people in this country. There is no excuse for not knowing what this name does to our babies. When they grow up seeing this, there's no excuse 
for what you are doing to our children and to our people. And I am honored today to be joined by the elected officials on this stage, but also out among you. Uh, school board member Kim Ellison is here. Hennepin County Commissioner Peter McLaughlin is here. State Representative Ray Dean is here. And State Senator Scott Dibble is here. And we are standing together. Yeah, let's give him a round of applause. City Council Member Cam Gordon is here. Because we know together what you all know. That when you insult the indigenous people of Minneapolis, of Minnesota, of the United States of America, you are insulting the people, all the people of Minneapolis, of Minnesota, of the United States of America. And we know what you know, that it's more than an insult. It's hate. It's hate. And when you are hating on the indigenous peoples of Minneapolis and Minnesota and the United States of America, you are hating on every one of us in Minneapolis and in Minnesota and in the United States of America. We take our lead from you and we lead with you and we know that this name has got to be changed. So just because it's fun to do, let's ch change the name just a little bit, right? Change the name! Change the name! Change the name! Change the name! We're gonna change get the name! Right We're gonna change, change the name! Change the name! Change the name! Next, I would like to introduce someone who, is a, who has fought for social and economic justice for Indian people in our urban community, my colleague the Minnesota, in the Minnesota Legislature, State Representative Karen Clark. Thank you, it's an honor to be here. We're going to read to you an official uh, resolution that will be introduced into the Minnesota Legislature by Susan and I, and also by Senator Scott Dibble in the Senate. We are going to read that to you right now, and this is going to become official when we all get reelected and go back to the legislature. A House resolution expressing the sense of the Minnesota House of Representatives denouncing the Washington NFL team's mascot and name. Whereas we believe that the Washington NFL team's mascot and use of its dehumanizing and outrageous name should be rejected as the demeaning, degrading, and unacceptable racial and cultural slur that it is. And whereas we believe the failure to stop this usage is a basic civil rights issue that could be converted to an opportunity to become a campaign for mutual respect, tolerance, equality, civility, and inclusion. And whereas it is unthinkable and unacceptable that we still have not succeeded in effectively addressing continued use of such degrading racial slurs in our publicly funded sports facilities. And whereas we salute and honor the decades of dedicated work that so many here have been doing to expose, educate, and try to stop this kind of blatant racism and to create deep and lasting respect for cultural integrity and whereas more than ever it is critically important that our Minnesota Native American Indian communities know that their elected officials stand with them in rejecting appeals to hate and bigotry and in supporting their right to cultural identity now therefore, now, therefore be it resolved that the Minnesota House of Representatives expresses its strong solidarity with this important protest and urges the Minnesota NFL team to take the responsible action being demanded here today. Change the name. We are honored to have many dignitaries join us today and it is a pleasure to introduce former Governor Jesse Ventura. Thank you, it's great to be here and it's great not to be a rookie here. I've been here before, but uh, 
I'd just like to state that I know what discrimination's like because I was an independent surrounded by Democrats and Republicans for four years and was discriminated against over at the Capitol by them. But uh, on a serious note, I'm also a white person who loves to read history and likes to read real history. And it's time for the white people to read history and understand that you don't make a name out of genocide. And you do not And you do not state that a name honors genocide. We don't want to honor genocide. So it's plain and simple. Dan Snyder, you're a, you're a rich white guy. What the hell would you know about any of this? So I'll end quick and say it's been my pleasure. I'm honored to be here. And if Washington comes back again, Governor Ventura will be here waiting for them again. Thank you. This is from the governor, Governor Ventura, who has marched with the people here. We're inviting Doreen Day up here and her sisters to do an honor song for our women. Who's <laughs> in the way, my gunny dog? Wabu no kwen dijin e kaz. Wabu jay shi and do dame. Abu ding a e gwa ni samba day. Anishinabe kwen dao. Good afternoon, my relatives. Today we're going to do an honor song for the women and children that led this march. Bonjour. Negani gabu we kwen dijin e kaz ga e mi gzien do dame. Mashkisibi and Nonjaba, Gaye Nisoma Deo, Gaye Mede Wanakwenda. We humbly request uh, everyone here uh, to do something that might be very difficult uh, to respect our intellectual, cultural property rights and not record, audio record this um, song. I'm going to follow that song. Woo! Let the people go. You did your part to make the white man go away. Obviously, that's not the way things were supposed to go. They took your life, made you stronger than they will ever do. And there will be no surrender, perpetual defender. He's got something sacred going on. From the land of the Lakota, Ojitikahuta. End in war. You bear the scars of change upon your soul life-giving woman you nurture future life from these ways of old and all will see many nations with both feet on the ground red nation woman you stood firm and never let us down and there will be no surrender perpetual defender She's got something sacred going on From the land of the Red Nation And for all generations Holy medicine man It is the Creator's will You give away your gift For the people Through the sacred ceremony They will live and there will be always someone to come along and take your place. You have been chosen to sacrifice for the red people's needs. And there will be no surrender, perpetual defender. 
He's got something sacred going on. From the land of the spirits, to know it, you must live it. Yeah, we got it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we got it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we got it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we got it. Oh, I wanted to note too that, that Mitch is, is known just as much for his work as a teacher and counselor uh, uh, for inner city kids. So thank you, Mitch. We are now joined by a very special guest who has traveled from upstate New York to be with us today. Ray Halbreiter is the nation representative of the United Nations. He is also publisher of Indian Country Today, and he launched the Change the Mascot campaign to widen the efforts to demand an end to racial epithets. He has been a national spokesman on this issue, and we are grateful to have him join us today. Please welcome Ray Halbreiter. I bring you greetings of peace from the Oneida people. Uh, my name is Guyan Gualodi, but I'm also known as Ray Halbreder. I'm here today really because of many others who have really paved the path here, and I was wise enough, and hopefully we'll all, we all wise enough to follow their lead. But Suzanne Schoenharjo, Amanda Blackhorse, the Minnesota Tribal Leadership, Clyde Bellacourt, and uh, many others have really made this effort for so many years, and we stand on their shoulders. But thank you all for being here today. It's truly an honor to be here in Minnesota and see such a beautiful sight of all our brothers and sisters here standing up together against this inequality, this racism. Minnesota is a place that throughout history has been a beating heart of the movement for social justice and equality. I don't have to explain to you why this fight is so critical. When pundits insist people of color have more important priorities than fighting to end the NFL's use of a dictionary-defined racial slur, they fundamentally misunderstand what this is all about. This is not just about a football team's name. This is about whether or not Indian people deserve to be treated with dignity and respect. This is about the seventh generation. This is about how our children view themselves. This is about fairness and equality. Clearly, Dan Snyder and the Washington team believe that Native people do not deserve to be treated as equals. They believe they have a right to continue profiting off and marketing on promoting a dictionary-defined, government-defined racial slur. It is important to remember the history of this word. This is the word that was screamed at our ancestors as they were dragged at gunpoint off their lands. It is an epithet made by the team's name, by the American history's most infamous segregationist, George Preston Marshall. The bad news for Michigan team stopped promoting this slur. Even the President of the United States and the United Nations have weighed in, saying that it is time for a change. Not surprisingly, Mr. Snyder and the NFL have dug in their heels. And we should ask why. Why are they so stubbornly refusing to change? Some of the answer might be to do with profits. The NFL is a $9 billion year global brand, and officials may fear that a decision that to stop slurring Native Americans by changing the name will reduce their profits. But then economic studies have shown that a name change will probably do the exact opposite. It will probably spur fans to buy new merchandise with a new name, thereby boosting the league's revenues. As the great Frederick Douglass said, power concedes nothing without a demand. Our demand is simple. Stop treating Native peoples as a target of slurs. Change the name and start treating us the way we, have, we should be, have deserved to be treated for hundreds of years, as equals. Our demand is simple, simple respect. Stop treating Native people as a profit center and a target of slurs and respect us the way we deserve to be respected. 
Respect our elders who are our past. Respect our people who are our present. Re most important, respect our children who are our future. Change the name. The most compelling reason to demand an end to the R word is so that our children and future generations do not have to deal with the pain and misunderstanding which this word creates. Among our youth, we are blessed to have new leaders, one of whom is our next speaker. She is a member of the Lower Sioux community, a student here at the University of Minnesota, and a spokesperson for and community outreach coordinator of the American Indian Student Cultural Center. Please welcome onto the stage Vanessa Good Thunder. Tokaya, Dakota Iwae, Chish, Demakoche Ki, Dakota Makoche, Nakun, Wooga Nicha, Ota Ikoyake, Ishto Washitu Iwaeke, Iho, Wana, Ampetu Kinde, Tue Oas, Yahipi Ki Washte, Minnesota Wawonspe Wakantia, Detchia Wawuyawapi, Dead Umhipi Ichish, we choye wa redskins umpi ki washte undaka pi shni. Redskin he uncha pi shni. Nakun tue we choye ki he un ki ha. Chante hechia su uyapi. Chee. Nakun we choye ki he uyaku pida undaku pida shni. Chee. We charge the unkipi shni chee. Demma koche ki, we choye ki, tue, we choye ki he un ki ha, wo ki xia, shicha ote ikoyake. Ehana, tue ikche, we charge the wanjik te ki ha, mazaska opawi he, num, kupi, chee. Pecha de han, tue, we choye ki he un ki ha, wo ki xia. Shicha ota ikoyake. He un dehan tue we choye ki he un ki ha. Dead un tipi ki ed upikta un chimpi shni. De dakuda ishkatapi hechakta shni. De we chasho ya te ekta e tuan pute hecha. Dead tue was yahipi ki chante tinsia na jipi. Daku hechatu ki sutaya na jipi. De wo oga hnicha hecha. Ahash wana te ha ana uchopta pi shni. Ampetu kinde nakun toka dakia kiksu yapte. Ampetu iyohi wo cheke yuha mani uyampi. Oyate ki wana anahop dampi, stogapi kta chimpi. Iho, wana iye hantu, bopi da tanke chichapi. Hello, my relatives. First, I spoke in the Dakota language because it's the language of this land and it has so much meaning to it. And now I'm going to do my best to translate in English. I said, it's really good to see you all here today. You guys are so beautiful. We are students of the University of Minnesota Twin Cities, and the reason why we are here is to say we are all not honored by the Washington football team's mascot name. We are not a Redskin. And it hurts our hearts just saying that word because it's degrading, it's dehumanizing, and it has a terrible history to this land. The word was used in bounty posters during the genocide of the Dakota people in the 1860s, marking our bodies up to $200. So every time we hear that word, it's a constant reminder of what happened here. And today the word is still being used to degrade us, which creates an unsafe and uncomfortable environment. Therefore, we want to say that for as long as the Washington football team and Dan Snyder continues to perpetuate this dehumanizing racial slur, they are not welcome here in our home. This land honors respect, and this land requires. 
requires respect. Therefore, he is not welcome. And this is not just an athletic issue or just about the name. This is one aspect of the many we as Native people are fighting every single day. But how can we fight for the other issues when every single Sunday people are seeing this stereotypical dehumanizing racial slur of us? We urge everyone here today, Chante Tinsia Najipi, stand up for what you believe in and have a brave heart. And not just today, but tomorrow and so forth. Every day is a prayer, and every day is a step further in educating people about who we are. People are listening and wanting to know. Wana ye hantu. It's time. Wopira chichiapi. Thank you.